What is good everybody? Welcome to an Epic My Damn Toys video. Today, ladies and gentlemen, we have a special video for you guys. As you guys know, if you didn't know, just the other day it was announced by ToyNewsI.com or Toy News International and WrestleFig News on Twitter that AEW officially is getting action figures. We are getting action figures from AEW. A toy line has been announced and they will be revealed at New York to Toy Fair at the end of this month. Very, very big news coming in a couple weeks. And I figured, you know what, Brad? Well, you, 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 since we know they're coming, since we know what they're, we don't know what they're going to be. We do know the two companies that are making it. We could cool toys and jazz wares are coming together to make them and we don't know if they're going to be you know these little kid figures where they're like little gimmick figures which wouldn't make sense to me i feel like they're going to be pretty collectible given the audience that watches aew is in the higher you know age range so hopefully that is the case here with these figures right here but Let's go ahead and get into it, guys. I figure why not just let's go ahead and make the first two waves. I am going to give you my own personal opinions on the first two waves and what we should get from AEW's first two waves of action figures. And, you know, let's just say they had an elite line. Let's just say they had an all elite wave is what they call it or all elite series is what they call it. I know that's what Mattels are called, but I'm just going to try it and, you know, match it just because they're all elite wrestling. So I figured let's, let's make it the all elite wave. And I'm going to run through what I would have for wave number one. So, you know, just like Elite Series number one and Elite Series number two. So we're going to go through both of those right quick. I'm going to tell you what figures I think they should be, who I think they should be, what gear they should have, what they should look like, and what their accessories should be. So before we get started, I will say that all these figures in each set will include interchangeable hands as well as accessories, which I just covered. So let's go ahead and dive in with Series number one, guys. This is all Elite Wave number one. Starting off, guys, we got to start off with the cleaner, right? We got to start off with the man who done it all, who's done it all. It is Kenny Omega. We are starting off with Kenny Omega, and I said that we should go with double or nothing gear. Now, this is his pink and black attire. Very good looking attire. I really like this attire. It was really down to this, the green and black one, or his little Terminator style. Not Terminator. What is it? I can't remember what it's called, but it's the it's referencing something else here, but we do have his pink and black attire. I think this is what he wore versus Chris Jericho at double or nothing, and this is the match, obviously, where John Moxley showed up and uh, hit him with the Dirty Deeds or the the, the paradigm shift here and so I went with this one and the accessories that would include in this is the entrance jacket with the removable gauntlet on his right arm think that would be fantastic it probably wouldn't be cloth but you know that'd be okay they're just getting started maybe we get some cooler stuff down the line there but Kenny Omega is the first figure in wave one and this figure looks fantastic and I'm pretty sure I'm gonna go ahead and plug everybody's if, if there's a custom figure in here I am gonna plug who it's from on the screen for you guys Next up, guys, the next two figures in our wave for wave number one is going to be Nick and Matt Jackson. Yes, sir, we got to have the Young Bucks. I wanted to put Kenny Omega and the Young Bucks both, or all three of them, I should say, in wave number one because I think that everybody is going to be super, super into these figures because Kenny Omega and the Young Bucks are guys that we've never had, obviously, in nice, articulated action figure form in this scale at this big of, you know what I'm saying, without making a custom, without anything, I think these three guys are going to be the main ones. But here for the Young Bucks, guys, I had to put them in matching gear, obviously. I went with full gear, 2019 gear. They're lime green, black, and gray, and whitish colors there with the, you know, the lime green tassels coming down on the boots and stuff. And I said that uh, Nick, Jas Nick Jackson would have a removable headband, and they would both come with cloth t-shirts. You guys can see the t-shirt on the screen there that they wore at full gear during the entrance. And uh, they did wear this when they teamed up with Omega, I do believe, and they took, I can't even remember who the hell they wrestled off the top of my head here. But I did want to put the Young Bucks here at the number two and three spot in their full gear 2019 gear. I think they would look ex uh, excellent. I know that they don't match Kenny, but I still feel that, you know, uh, we need the double or nothing gear for Kenny first, and then we can get that green attire later on in the thing. But uh, there it is for Matt and Nick Jackson for the Young Bucks, guys. We got the full gear 2019 attire for them in the lime green. The fourth figure in the wave number one, guys, I went with Chris Jericho. Obviously, you got to have your first ever AEW World Champion in wave number one. So I went with Chris Jericho from All Out 2019. I said that he would obvious, it's pretty obvious he would come with the AEW Championship. I also threw in the scarf, the hat, and a bottle of bubbly. I thought that would be a really cool accessory to throw in with our Chris Jericho figure. It would work perfectly. AEW Championship is the big accessory, so no jacket the first time around, but Chris Jericho 
obviously has to be included. So that's the first four figures in the set right there, guys. But moving on to spot number five, we're going to go with John Moxley, obviously. John Moxley, Chris Jericho, Kenny Omega, the biggest probably names in all of AEW. So I figure, I feel like they would put them in wave number one. So John Moxley, it would obviously be his double or nothing 2019 attire where he first showed up in AEW. He attacked Kenny Omega, hit him with the paradigm shift, and then uh, threw him off of that stack of poker chips. And so what I'm thinking is he could either come with a few things. I think that a cloth vest with, the, you know, the mocks on the back or a rubber vest with mocks on the back would be really sick. Um, or they could include, like, one big giant poker chip or something, like, as a base, like, you could, you know, display him on or something like that. That'd be kind of cool. Like, the Elite 70 Vince McMahon, I think, has, you know, an accessory like that. Obviously not a poker chip, but the little blue platform. that They could do something like that um, just to uh, kind of commemorate the moment. Or they could give us, you know, a 2x4 with barbed wire or a chair with barbed wire or something like that. That would also be a really cool accessory. But we got to get the entrance vest and the debut of John Moxley would obviously fit perfectly into that wave number one for AEW's first Elite Series. And rounding out our, our first series, guys, is going to be Cody Rhodes. And it is going to be from the same event as Kenny and John Moxley. I'm going with Double or Nothing for the, um, I, I just think the moment, you know, how big it was, it was their first pay-per-view show or first show as under the, you know, the umbrella AEW. So I would have him with his weight belt, his entrance jacket, and a sledgehammer because you guys know he in, he entered with the sledgehammer. He broke the throne and, you know, he did the little symbolism, you know, the declared war on NXT or Triple H or whatever you want to call it. So sledgehammer accessory the weight belt obviously to tie into the blue and gold uh, because i mean that's part basically part of his wrestling attire and then you have the entrance jacket which would probably be rubber because i mean that's a pretty freaking nice jacket he was looking like george washington out there so cody rhodes in the double or nothing attire would round out the all elite wave number one that is a really sick wave if they went with that exact thing right there i don't think you could ask for anything better so kenny omega the young bucks nick and matt jackson chris jericho john moxley and cody rhodes is is wave number one let me know if you would change anything about wave number one. Now let's get into wave number two, guys. Starting off our wave number two, I'm going to go with Adam Hangman Page. I would go with his attire versus Jericho. I don't think he changes his attire around that much, but uh, his accessories would obviously be his entrance vest and his new accessory that he always wears during the entrance right there. Maybe a bandana, maybe the cracker barrel, maybe, I don't know, or maybe just a regular barrel accessory would be perfect to go with that, maybe. But Adam Hangman Page has to be in wave number two. Just because Elite One is so stacked, I feel like you got to plug in Adam Hangman Page. Another right star in AEW would have to fit perfectly in wave number two. Moving on to the next figure in wave two is going to be Pac. Now, Pac is a pretty regular figure. You guys will see the little render image that we got from Mattel. It's basically the exact same figure slash attire that we were going to get from Mattel, but they ended up going with the gold for the Elite 55 Neville. This one's the same, except there's no Neville logo. Obviously, he's worn the exact same trunks. He's worn the exact same attire, and, you know, he's just a, a little bastard. I mean, that's what he does. So, he's got the all-black attire, no Neville logo. Uh, I said he could come with, like, a steel chair with AEW's logo on it just because he doesn't really wear any entrance gear. He doesn't really wear shirts. He just comes to the ring, kicks ass, and that's pretty much what he's about. Maybe a flight stand and a steel chair or maybe just a flight stand. I don't know. I'm just kind of thinking outside the box, but Pac would definitely have to go in wave number two for the AEW Elite Series. Moving on to uh, spot number three in wave two, guys, is going to be MJF. MJF is obviously another rising star, so uh, both of these waves are, are completely packed out with great stars, so I, th I thought I had to plug in MJF. You know, he's really, um, you know, he's not like Cody Rhodes or Jericho or Moxley. He is AEW homegrown talent right here, and so MJF would fit perfectly in wave number two. For his accessories, I think I would include a microphone because he never shuts the hell up. You got a scarf, and I would go with his pink attire or his scarf attire. You know, the attire that matches his scarf. I like both of those attires the most, so uh, that would be really cool. You'd have his little smirk face for his uh, head sculpt. I think that would be a really strong figure right there. So MJF would be the third figure in wave number two. Moving on to figure number four for wave two is going to be Darby Allen. Now, everybody's a huge fan of Darby Allen. If you've ever seen him wrestle, really good guy. You know, he, I, he wears the same attire pretty much every time you'd have the half sculpt face paint um for accessories i would include a skateboard and a cloth black coat i think that would be perfect for darby allen i think this would be a fantastic figure and so i've seen plenty of great customs out there so uh this would be a figure that i think they would knock out of the park and just thinking about these waves actually coming to fruition knowing that we're going to be getting some of these guys in uh, you know in just a couple weeks we're going to see these figures in the flesh and we don't know if they're going to be you know a lead articulate we don't know how accurate they're going to be to the mattel you know style they could be little 
fart in whole figures. They could be like little pieces of shit that nobody wants. So hopefully that's not the case. But uh, just imagining these figures in full, you know, scale with our Mattel figures is really exciting to think about. But Darby Allen would be my number four pick. You got the skateboard and you got the cloth back black coat. Number five in this set is going to be Joey Janela. Now, this is a spot that I think you could plug in a lot of guys. Um, me, personally, I'd probably plug in Luchasaurus just because I, I love Luchasaurus so much. But I put in Joey Janela, you know, pretty pretty big fan favorite. Orange Cassidy could go right here. Jimmy Havoc. Um, guys like that could probably go here. Even Christopher Daniels could probably go right here, maybe. But um, I went with Joey Janela just for this. I went with the Fighter Fest attire where he took on John Moxley uh, with the it was like pink, blue, and black looking pretty good there. And uh, for his accessories, guys, I did have his shades, obviously his sunglasses, maybe a cloth bad boy t-shirt, you know, his little signature shirt, or maybe a barbed wire uh, board slash table would be a pretty cool accessory from that matchup. So you'd have the sunglasses, the cloth shirt, and maybe a uh, table or something like that would be really sick. Um, so Joey Janela would round out the fifth figure in our series of wave number two. And finally, to, f uh, to finalize wave number one and number two, I'm going with a women's figure, and I am going... It's really difficult. I wanted to put Dr. Britt Baker here, but since she has not won the championship, I went with Riho for the last spot just because she was your first ever AEW Women's Championship, so Riho would be the last figure. She would come with the AEW Women's Championship, and it would be in her white and pink attire. I think that's the only accessory she would really come with because I really don't know what the hell else she could plug in there. But Riho would finalize our All Elite Wave number two. So that is my All Elite Wave number one and number two that I just kind of threw together. I was spitballing. I thought that would make for a pretty good video, you know, breaking down what figures we may get and how I would do it if I was the one running the AEW uh, figure line. But again, we don't know what they're going to look like. We don't know if they're going to be like small scale fart and bag figures. We don't know if they're going to be basic style or they're going to be highly articulated articulated or they're going to even be highly detailed we don't freaking know but if they're going to be anything like elite figures this is what i would want them to book it as and they may have five in a wave they may have seven in a wave who knows what the what the future holds we will know a lot more once it gets to new york toy fair coming in a couple weeks so that is going to do it for today's video guys thank you so very much for watching i hope you guys did enjoy my all elite waves one and two if you guys have any suggestions anything you would change attires you know waves guys you would take out guys you would put into the waves Please let me know down in the comment section below. But that is going to do it for today's video, guys. Thank you so very much for watching. Subscribe to the channel for more epic WWE and WWE action, uh, epic AEW action figure videos. Follow me on Instagram and Twitter at MyDamnToys, and I will see you guys in the next video. Thank you.